it's not just the looks we share. We also have a lot in common with chimpanzees genetically. The hereditary relationship to our forebears is his speciality. But chimps are not our direct ancestors. To really understand the human evolution, this researcher examines the very roots of our family tree. My name is Svante Pebel. I'm fascinated by the genome of extinct species, particularly early humans. One of these early human species has been a research subject of Svante Pebo's for many years, the Neanderthal. They inhabited Europe long before our species, and they hold the key to important information about the evolution of present-day humans. For me, to me, the Neanderthal is particularly fascinating because evolutionarily, they are our closest relatives. If we want to define ourselves biologically or genetically, we need to compare today's human beings to the Neanderthal and find out how we differ from them. Geneticist Pebo has successfully sequenced Neanderthal DNA a milestone in paleogenetics, a new branch of research which he founded. His idea? To understand the past by studying the genes of extinct species. At various excavation sites, often in caves, scientists collect hundreds of bone fragments, the raw material for Pebo's work on the Neanderthal genome. The valuable material is taken from the cave to Svante Pebo's clean room laboratories. Here, the first step in an arduous undertaking is the extraction of potential genetic information from the bone. However, only very few samples yield usable Neanderthal DNA. But with years of experience, the team has succeeded in digging up the genetic treasures of the past. What we have now are some very high-quality Neanderthal genomes. They come close to the quality we would get from present-day humans. Therefore, we can clearly see many of the differences between the two genomes, almost all of them. Imagination versus fact. Many portraits of Neanderthals and their lifestyle take some artistic liberties. But Pebo's genetic work helps reconstruct the real picture of this extinct hominid species. This is made possible by enhancing the genetic fragments extracted from the bones. Tiny DNA pieces are copied and pieced together as in a jigsaw puzzle. This high-tech approach led to a scientific sensation which casts living human beings in a new light. What we found is that the two species mixed. After modern man left Africa, they encountered the Neanderthal in Western Eurasia, and they actually procreated. And today, we still find one or two percent Neanderthal genes in the DNA of people outside Africa. For a long time, this was a matter of intense speculation, but he found hard evidence. There are parts of Neanderthal DNA in our own genetic makeup. Coming from Africa, modern Homo sapiens encounters the Neanderthal in the Middle East about 50,000 years ago. Some individuals of each species mate and produce mixed offspring. Their descendants become part of the early European gene pool. These insights became possible only thanks to the latest laboratory technology, parts of which Pebo and his team developed themselves. So, do the Neanderthal genes in each of us play any noticeable role? 
Some of the genetic types inherited from the Neanderthal increase the risk for certain illnesses in today's population, while they protect from other illnesses. There are favorable adaptations in the genome, particularly related to the immune system, that now prevail in 60 to 70 percent of Europeans. The finding that Neanderthal and Homo sapiens mated in Europe is based on individual remains. Analyzed by laboratory technology, they provide important data for the reconstruction of our genealogy. In this way, Pabo's team are adding more and more branches to our family tree. Asian people, for example, carry significantly fewer Neanderthal genes. How come? An important clue was found in the Denisova cave in Siberia, a sensational find of historic proportions. We were extremely lucky. The Russian archaeologists provided us with a small finger bone. When we sequenced its genome, we were surprised to find it was neither Homo sapiens nor Neanderthal. It was something else altogether, only very distantly related to the Neanderthal. We now know that this species we named Denisovaman contributed its genes to the people living living in Asia today, especially along the Pacific. Investigating our evolution with the help of extinct ancestors and relatives still living today, a major undertaking. The comparison of similarities and differences in the genome of the species Homo sapiens and their relatives allows the team to come ever closer to the full story of our ancestry. This leads to new knowledge and new questions. Our biggest challenge is to find what the genetic variations mean that we all share today, no matter where on this planet we live. The differences to Neanderthal and great apes, which mutation has any meaningful effect, and which change influences the development or the workings of our brain. Svante Pebo founder of paleogenetics, a scientific quest along the twisted paths of evolution. <laughs>